Okay, so watch points are pretty interesting and I had no idea how they actually worked. So I've, I've used them in the debugger before. Um, watch points let you uh, watch if a piece of memory is ever read to or uh, written, read from or written to. And so breakpoints um, let you, or not, notify you when a piece of code is hit, but watch points notify you if, if for example, a variable is, is read to or written from, which is useful sometimes. Because you, you might not know, uh, you might be interested um, why some variable is getting corrupted or something, and you want to know exactly the point at where um, some value, uh, so some code is writing to it, um, but you don't know where, and so that's what they can be used for. And um, they're pretty interesting because they re rely on hardware support. Unlike breakpoints, which, uh, are kind of a software only mechanism. Um, the, the to implement breakpoints, typically the debugger writes a a specific uh, instruction into the actual code um, that you're that you're trying to get a break uh, like a breakpoint from. It literally mutates and, and changes the executable code of that function and writes in the, the breakpoint trap instruction such that when execution hits it, it, it raises a trap and the debugger gets control again. And so that's, that's a software only mechanism, but watch points are different because they rely on hardware support um, because there's just, uh, you can't do it efficiently in software. It would be way too slow because basically if you were to try to do this in software at every single um, memory access instruction, you would need to be checking, okay, is it accessing uh, this variable that I was interested in? Okay, nope. Next instruction, it, literally instruction by instruction, you would be having to do this check and it would slow things down, slow things down way too much. And so that's why uh, we use hardware support for it. And so specifically, we're using debug registers, which are a feature of the architecture you are running on. And um, what's interesting is that there's not that many of them. There's four typically um, on x86, this is, which is what we're looking at. There are um, well, there, there's technically more than four debug registers, but you can only uh, watch three or four addresses because of the debug address registers. And so what you can do is you can load the register with an address that you'd like to watch, a virtual address. And then in some other control registers, you specify exactly the conditions you would um, like the watch points to fire on. And so you can say, for example, um, only if uh, we're executing that address or only if we're writing to that address um, or, or reads and writes. Kind of interesting that this one is undefined. Um, apparently you can also specify some lengths, but basically this is, this is real hardware debugging support because we it's it's too inefficient to in software be constantly doing this this check of okay we're, we're accessing some memory is it the the memory we're interested in and so um, it's implemented in hardware but I'm assuming that um, there's a reason that it's such a limited amount of registers I mean obviously the registers can consume space on the die or whatever and so you, you're not going to have like a thousand of them or something. Um, but even as far as runtime cost, and so um, just because we're doing it in hardware doesn't mean there's there's no cost. Um, I would assume that even in hardware, it's something along the lines of at uh, every instruction executed in the pipeline, we have to compare the instruction against these four registers, which probably happens all in parallel and is pretty fast. Um, probably not some serial thing, but I mean, actually, maybe, maybe that, that, that's, that's kind of why, like performance wise, like if, if they were doing that in a serial, like one after the other check, yeah, that, that, would, that would not work for a thousand. But if they're doing it all in parallel, it's, it's less of a perform, like a runtime performance thing and more probably like a die space kind of issue. But, but yeah, you get four of these, which, which is kind of interesting. And um, you put your address in an address re register you flip some bits in the control register to specify um, what behavior you want, what you want it to break on, and then you can get some results out of 
the status register, presumably. And so when the watch point is hit, the hardware will raise a CPU level exception um, that the kernel needs to catch. So this is quite a low level mechanism. Um, it raises a, a hardware um, like trap, basically. Um, I, don't, I didn't quite read this all the way to see exactly where, but it, it's, um, it's a CPU level exception, presumably similar to a page fault or something like this. That might be totally wrong, but I'm, that's my understanding so far. And then you get notified, and then um, the software, the kernel, can, can, can do what it wants. Um, this, uh, since this is such a low level mechanism, it is ring zero only, or not accessible from user space. So the kernel is the only one that can modify these registers. These, uh, the, the debug registers are privileged resources. Move instructions can only be executed at privilege zero. So the kernel is the only one that's allowed to use these. And that raises the question, so how, how, do, uh, how does the debugger actually use this then? If when you type in like watch blah, 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 blah into um, your debugger, it's, it's a user space program. And so it's not allowed to modify these debug registers. So how is it doing it? Um, well, the answer is ptrace, which is the typical answer for any almost anything a debugger wants to do. And so uh, I'm, I'm Linux. So uh, debuggers need to do things like um, read memory of a process, write memory of a process to, to write those uh, breakpoint instructions. Um, it needs to start and stop the process. These are all things it's doing with the ptrace API. Um, and, what the, and, and what it also does with ptrace is, is modify the uh, debug registers because it can't, it, again, it can't do that from user space. And so it uses um, ptrace to, to do this. And specifically, it's using this, the peak user and poke user ptrace commands. Um, so t the typical ones that are that are more commonly known are like ptrace attach, ptrace peak data, um, poke data, right? Th that's the one for accessing memory. But peak user and poke user is a bit more of an interesting one. Uh, when you use the commands, you're not accessing the address space of the attached process. You're accessing actually what's called the user area, which is presumably this uh, like structure inside the kernel or something like this, um, which contains a lot of information and a lot of uh, process execution state information like register values is the most kind of common, I don't know, the, the most readily available example. Like you, there's a struct with all the registers, and this is, this is architecture specific. So we're in the x86 uh, subtree of, of Linux. Um, but the actual struct user is more than just the registers. It has all this execution state. And notably, towards the end of the struct, are uh, an array of debug registers. And so this, this thing is eight long. I think there's eight. <laughs> eight registers or something like that, I don't know. Um, but that's how you do it. And so you use ptrace to do a peak or poke user, and then you modify it this way. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. If I can quickly find a coding example, that would be, no. That would, that would be nice of exactly how, how to use it, but I, those, those are available online. But that, this, that was really interesting for me to learn um, exactly how watch points work, setting these privileged registers from user space using Beatrice, um, specifically using this, uh, this user section, which was new to me. Um, this is interesting. This is just me testing out how many watch points 
I can add. I mean, I'm running on my x86 um, Mac OS machine, so it's not Linux, but it's, it's an x86 processor, and I have this simple C program that just has like, t like a bunch of local ints, and what I'm trying to do is set watch points on as many as I can, and indeed, after the fourth one, I start to get errors. It doesn't tell me why watch point creation failed, but my assumption is that it's because we ran out of hardware debug registers. So that's everything I know about watch points.